forget Florence, forget Paris. After the Second World War, the center of the art world was here in New York. Up till now, American art hadn't been taken very seriously. Culture only flowed one way across the Atlantic. But from the 1940s, America became a source of inspiration for a group of artists who would become the New York School. They started to paint big, really big, and people found them baffling. It takes time, but if you just wait on and refuse to be off-put, you'll find these paintings surprisingly rewarding. And the pioneer of all this was the man from the Wild West, Jackson Pollock. He painted his paintings, if you can use the word painted, in a completely new way. He didn't even use a paintbrush. He dribbled and dripped his paint onto the canvas. But not randomly, with complete control. This is Jackson Pollock's great lavender mist. And it is great, physically too. To see it, you have to come so close that in a way you can't see it. There's no image you can stand at a distance from and take in. You've got to come right up and move around it. And of course, it suddenly dawned upon me that's exactly what Jackson Pollock wanted because that's how he painted it. Not on an easel, but there on the floor, and he moved around it himself. In every other painting, the way it was painted has disappeared into the final product. You can see something, perhaps. But all the artist did, the way he walked backwards and forwards, the way he used his brush, all that's gone forever. In this painting, it's all preserved. Every movement. Every idea that occurred to him, that little spot of brown over there, for example, or the way you've got these long slashes of black, all of this is forever there, a record of creativity, white-hot creativity. And for somebody like myself who's completely uncreative, it's awesome to be so close to the actual making of something beautiful. Dripping paint turned Pollock into a celebrity. He was even filmed in the surrounds of his studio, leaving us this unique record of an artist at work. But he was a tough, macho alcoholic whose greatest, most sensitive paintings were only created when he was sober. around his canvas. It's an enthralling experience. Yes, but it's a heartrending one. When you realize that making this film started him again on his suicidal drinking habits. He was a very private man, Pollock, and letting all this be seen must somehow have seemed to him a betrayal. He was off the wagon. Then he jumped straight back on again and it all ended with driving into a tree and killing himself. Pollock died when he was only 44, and he passed into legend, almost a benchmark against which other artists must measure themselves.